every pastor represented here. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. May the Lord richly bless you. If you could give it unto us, Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 32. And the Bible says, Now I commit. So brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I want us to make a prayer that, Lord, as your word comes forth, I pray in the name of Jesus, may it build me up. May it build my spirit, man. Let it not be just about excitement and some good vibes and inshallah. Let it build you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you lift up your voice, Shiloh, and pray to the God of heaven as your word comes forth i pray in the name of jesus may it build me up 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 as your word comes further let it build me up let it build me up in the name of jesus christ as your word come further let it build me up in the name of jesus christ we are waiting on you my father as your word comes forth come on do not be silent cry out to the god of heaven that as his word comes further it shall build us up it shall build us up it shall build us up. It shall build our spirit man. It shall build our minds. It shall build our souls. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we shall not get out of this place the way we came. Because the Lord shall speak to us. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so we are afraid. And God's people said Amen. And God's people said Amen. One more time. Would you celebrate God as you have your blessed seats? As you have your blessed seats. Amen. It's good to see you this morning. Those who came in this chilly morning, I pray in the name of the Lord that the Lord shall see that sacrifice. You desire to leave your bed, come and come when it's drizzling. May the Lord see that sacrifice and meet you in the name of Jesus. And I can promise you one thing, that he shall show up in this place in a mighty way and you shall not regret your coming in the name of Jesus Christ. And today we are redigging the wells of prayer. Somebody say the wells of prayer. We are redigging the wells of prayer. So if you're writing it down, this is, um, this, this is what we are talking about this morning and I pray in the name of Jesus that I'll be, as I'll be speaking, that our spirit man will be charged up in the name of Jesus. Those who walked in this place with their prayer lives dead, you shall be renewed. Buona sana. You shall be revived in the name of the Lord. And I'm in Luke chapter number 11. You could give it unto us. And verse number 1. Luke chapter number 11. And verse Number one, Luke chapter number 11 and verse number one. Aha. Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. Let us read it together. One, two, three. Now it came to... <laughs> Come on, let us read it together. With some energy, let us put some energy. Uh -huh. One, two, three. Now it came to pass as he was praying uh -huh, in a certain place when he seized that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. This is one thing that we are learning from this scripture, that we, there is a place of praying and there is a place of under praying with understanding. Blessed be the name of Jesus. There's a place of praying. And there's another thing, praying with understanding. Now in this place seated here, there are some of us who, our prayer lives, indeed they're in trouble. They are, um, uh, they are close to dying. But there are some of us also here, we are tired of praying because we've prayed, we have not seen results. And could it be that we are praying without an understanding? Prayer ought to be taught. Prayer is not just about words, it's not about screaming, it's not about shouting. We all to, to pray with an understanding. And it is so unfortunate in our generation that things are getting worse, that prayer is no longer something that is exciting. When we talk about prayer, we feel like uh, we are becoming so spiritual. It's, it's so unfortunate that all we care about is some good drip, some good vibes, and we've left the place of prayer. Let me tell you, children of God, one of the things that build the, our fathers to the place where they have been and they have gotten to is the place of prayer. 
Let me tell you, when you see those old men and you see them thriving and you see them succeed in every dimension of their lives, not only financially, not only spiritually, but in family and in everything they do, they have labored in the place of prayer. Buona sana. And today I came this morning to challenge us, even as young people, may we rise up in this, in our day, to the place of prayer, that we will make prayer intentional. We will pray intentionally. Buona sana. That we will rise and pray with an understanding. We will rise and pray with an understanding. Buona sana. And therefore, as I speak this morning, I pray in the name of Jesus, for those of us who walked in this place with our prayer lives dead, we shall be revived in the name of Jesus Christ. And those of us who have been praying and not receiving results, or we are tired of praying, that we shall get an understanding and the eyes of understanding shall be opened up. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, child of God, that prayer is not a religious idea, but it is a spiritual concept for living a victorious life. You can write that down. That prayer is not a religious idea. Prayer is not a religious idea. It's not about the Christianity. It's not us as Shiloh. It's not us as DCIK. It's not us about Deliverance Church. It is a spiritual concept for living a victorious life. If you want to live a victorious life in every dimension of your life, you ought to pray. If you want to see success, if you want to see victory in your finances, if you want to see victory in your family life, if you want to see victory in our business, if you want to see victory in everything that we do, prayer, it is a spiritual concept for living a victorious life. Buona sana. I said buona sana. Having been brought up uh, in the northern places, I have grown up with uh, Muslims. Our Muslim brothers. And one of the things that we, we, I really admire and learn from them is how they've made prayer intentional. It's how they've made prayer intentional. Blessed be the name of Jesus. This week I was just doing a study and reading uh, one of the things that they do and reading the Quran. It's important. Wisdom says you learn from everything that is around you. Buona sana. And this is what it says. That children ought to be forced to pray from the age of 7 to 10. You teach them to pray. They take them through classes called madrasa. And, and it says that if by 10 years they are not hearkening to the prayer call, they are punished to pray. They are punished to pray. Is that so in our Christian life? Are we punished to pray? Is, is very few of us who have grown up with a doctrine where prayer was a must. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, when you see them succeed in everything they do, when you see them dominate nations, it is not a mystery. It is not luck. It is them. They have been intentional and invested in their prayer life. Buona sana. They take them through classes called madrasa. I was looking at the Buddhists, the Buddhists and the Hindus. They call it the matras. They call it their prayer, their, the matras. Children are forced to pray 108 times, 27 times in a day to chant the prayer. Buona sana. Imagine waking up early in the morning. They wake up and, and move. When, when you travel from here, those of us travel to Kakamega, when you travel to here to Kakamega with the easy coach, where their station is, there is a Hindu, there is a, uh, the, the, the Hindu, the mosque for the Hindus. And when you get there because you arrive at around 3 p.m., you see them with your children, you see them with, with, uh, with everything, their belongings. They wake up so early in the morning to go and pray. And therefore, this man, when you are sleeping, this man, when you are snoring, he is praying. Let me tell you, child of God, this God is a God of principles. They will dominate. It is true that we serve a living and a mighty God. They may be worshipping idols, but you see when they make the place of prayer intentional and you do not make it, let me tell you, we are doomed to live defeated lives. We are doomed to live defeated lives. I was looking at the Muslim and, and seeing how intentional they are. They go five times to pray in the mosque. Early in the morning at 4.45, you'll hear them, the Muathini, pray. At afternoon, you will hear them again at 12.45. In the late afternoon, they'll be there again. In the evening at 6, they'll be there again. And in the night, they'll be there again, praying five times. Children, the old men and the young men. Where did we go at the place of prayer? Where did we go wrong at the place of prayer? And this is why now we are living the defeated lives. We are their subjects. We, the children of God. That's where Jesus comes and says, for the children of the world are wiser. 
For the children of God are wiser than the children of light. Where did our morning glories go? Where did our lunch hours go? Children of God, I call upon you this morning that I speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ. May our prayer lives be revived in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of God challenge you that we shall rise, us, rise back to the place of prayer. Somebody say amen. That your prayer life, prayer is not a religious concept, but it is a spiritual concept for living a victorious life. And this is what I'll say. Show me a successful man and I will show you a man who understands prayer. It doesn't matter what you're praying to, but show me someone who has risen. Whether it is in the occult, whether it is the Muslim, whether it is the Hindu, whether it is what religion. Let me tell you, show me a successful man and I will show you a man who has made it intentional. That the place of prayer, they, they, they have made the place of prayer intentional. Show me a successful man. I show you a man who understands the dwelling place of his God. Show me a successful man and I'll show you a man who knows that does, only, does not only pray, but prays with understanding. As I speak to this generation, my generation, I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall not remain in slumber, but we shall rise up in the place of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. That our prayer life will be revived. Somebody say amen. Would you lift up your hand and pray, my Father and my God, may you revive me. May you revive my prayer life. May I pray with understanding in the name of Jesus Christ and as you lift your hand I pray in the name of the Lord that the grace to pray is getting released that our prayer life are getting revived in the name of Jesus and God's people say amen this is what I'll say this morning child of God neglecting a prayer life is signing a contract of living a defeated life neglecting the prayer life is signing a contract an agreement for living a defeated life when you neglect the prayer life let me tell you there is nothing in your life that will prosper there is nothing in your life that will succeed your business will not succeed your your relationships will not succeed your career will not succeed you can write that down neglecting the prayer life it is signing an agreement for living a defeated life. Blessed be the name of Jesus. When it comes to prayer life, we need to be intentional. Invest in our understanding of prayer. We are not only called to pray, but we are also called to understand prayer. Invest heavily in understanding prayer. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, invest heavily in a place of understanding prayer. Look for another neighbor and tell them, neighbor, invest heavily in understanding prayer. In other words, look at people who have written books on prayer. Invest heavily. Christian prayer. Understand the prayer concept. Because neglecting prayer is signing a contract for living a defeated life. And therefore this morning, I want to cover two parts that will help us understand prayer. Number one, why do we pray in the name of Jesus? And number two, why should we continue praying? I'll be covering those parts and I'll be out of your way. All of them, I have like three points. So I pray in the name of the Lord that this shall help us. It's not everything, but this for the beginning. God giving me another opportunity, we shall continue speaking about prayer. But I, my desire is, it is not covering the syllabus, but the Spirit of the Lord may charge us up to understand prayer. And therefore, what does it mean to pray in the name of Jesus? When we are talking about redigging and repossessing the wells of our fathers, we are going back to the basics. Those are the basics. Many other times that we pray in the name of Jesus, but we, we lack the understanding. What is this name that we are calling? What does it mean to pray in the name of the Lord? Blessed be the name of Jesus. Number one, I have written here that praying in the name of Jesus means that praying with the revelation of his nature. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we are praying with the revelation of his nature. His attribute in regard to that particular issue. Buenas Fuesana. Praying in the name of Jesus means praying with the revelation of his nature. You only understand the nature of God when you take time and study scripture. You only understand his nature when you read his word. We only understand who he is when we read 
his word. Therefore, when we pray in the name of Jesus, it means that we are praying with the revelation of his nature. That Jesus is my healer. That Jesus is Rafa. That Jesus is the lifter up of my head. Do you understand the nature of Jesus? Look at, us, look at your neighbor and ask them, neighbor, do you understand the nature of Jesus? Look for another neighbor and ask them, neighbor, do you have the revelation of Jesus? Do you know that he is Rafa? Do you know that he is Jireh? Do you know that he is Nisi? Blessed be the name of Jesus. And therefore, when I stand here and I speak in the name of Jesus, uh, what I am saying is his nature. Is he is the healer. He is the restorer. He is Rafa. He is Jireh. He is Nisi. His nature. We ought to understand the nature of of Jesus. Number two, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray with a revelation that we are submitted to his will. We pray with a revelation that it, the, the back ends with him. We pray with a revelation that we are submitted to, will, to his will. And as Jesus was submitted to the will of the Father, so are we submitted to his will. We are submitted to his will. Child of God, let me tell you, prayer is not bribe. Some of us, we go to God, and when prayers are not answered, we feel disappointed. Prayer is not bribe. I look, for, look, look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, prayer is not a bribe. Leave that neighbor, look for another one who looks like they're believing and hearing what I'm saying. Tell them, prayer is not I'm twisting God. You know, at times we go pray for a job and when we miss it, we feel like God did answer. Let me tell you, child of God, I don't know whether it's God's servant rejects who said some rejection was what? Protection. There are prayers which were not answered because it is for your own good. We are submitted to his Look at your neighbor one more time and tell them we are submitted to his will. Therefore, when you pray for that man and you do not get that man, know that you are submitted to his will. When you pray for that job and you miss that opportunity, do not be sub uh, disappointed. You pray with the revelation that I am submitted to his will. I am not here to bribe God. I do not wake up early in the morning to bribe God. I'm not praying in the afternoon to bribe God. I'm not praying in the evening to bribe God. I am submitted submitted to his will and this is more so for those of us who they we have we by the by god's grace we have grown in the place of prayer and we can pray five hours we can pray two hours we can pray the whole day let me tell you child of god we are still submitted to his will there is nothing wrong. That is where we are pressing to, the place of commitment, releasing ourselves and committing ourselves to the place of prayer. But we also need the revelation and understanding that it's not bribe. See hongo na enda kupea God. Si ugeoke mtu mwambie si hongo tunapea God. We are submitted to his will. Number three, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray with the revelation that we are praying in his authority. We are praying in his authority. We are standing in his authority. And scripture says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 9, for God exalted him above every other name and gave, gave him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess in heaven and those, who, and those on earth and those under the earth, every tongue shall confess. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we are praying in his authority. So number one, we have said that we are praying what? When we pray in the name of Jesus, we are praying with the revelation of his nature. Number two, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we are praying in accordance to his will. And number three, when we pray in the name of Jesus, we pray with understanding and revelation of his authority. Somebody say nature. Somebody say nature. Somebody say will. Somebody say authority. Ah, come on, talk to me. Somebody say nature. Somebody say will. Somebody say authority. So when we stand and pray in the name of Jesus, we have that understanding. When you want to get, um, when you, if, you, if you want to get employed, maybe uh, just an example in, in DCIK, and Bishop sends you to the HR, Buenas Fesana, number one, the HR understands the nature of Bishop. He's, an, he's a man of integrity. He, has, he, he understands that he's a man who gives people a job. I'm just giving this example. Buona sphere sana. He understands his what? His nature. Number two, it is the will of the Bishop for you to be what? Employed, right? 
And number three, he is the bishop. He has the what? The authority. And therefore, if that is a, just an example of a man, what about our great God that we serve? What about Jesus, his name exalted above other gods? And therefore, in the name of Jesus, uh, I pray may we walk with the revelation uh, of his nature. May we walk uh, in the revelation uh, of his authority. And may, may we walk with the revelation uh, of his will uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray for you in the name of the Lord uh, you who was discouraged. Uh, may you now pray with understanding uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, God people say amen. amen as i wind up now that we are done with the 21 days of prayer and fasting it is not the end of praying why should we continue praying why should we continue praying i really hope you plugged in during the 21 days of fasting let me tell you one of the advantages of praying when people are praying it is not as the dcik calendar it is that there is ease when we pray together there is ease to fast. There is ease to pray. And number two, that combined effort. And this is an opportunity where our prayers are answered. Therefore, those, of the thing, those things that you've been praying alone and not getting answered, when you hear the 21 days of prayer and fasting, when you hear the 40 days of prayer and fasting, it is the opportunity now you have an army praying with you. Therefore, look at your neighbor and, and, and ask them, neighbor, I hope you plugged in. And if you didn't, there is no condemnation. Next time, you have an understanding. Therefore, why should we continue pray, what, praying? What is the assignment of prayer? Number one, prayer enhances our value. Prayer enhances our value. And I am in Mark chapter number one and verse number 35. If you could give it unto us, prayer enhances our value. This is Jesus praying. Mark chapter number one, verse number 35. Let us read it together. Two, three. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed in a solitary place and pray. There are times that you need to move in a solitary place and pray. Verse number two. And Simon uh -huh, and they that were with him followed after him. Verse number 37. And when they had found him, they said to him, All men seek thee. Let us read that verse together. And when they found him, they said unto him that, All men seek thee. Let me tell you, by nature of who Jesus was, he was already valuable. True or true? But it was after that he went to the place of prayer and he came out that all men were seeking for him. Let me tell you, who follows you? Who pursues you determines your value. You can write that down. It's good for your Instagram and Twitter page. Who pursues you is a direct reflection. Let me rephrase it. Who pursues you is a direct reflection of your value. Who pursues you is a direct reflection of your value. And that's why in scripture you see there are men who are being pursued by worthless men. There are men who are being pursued by vagabonds. When Jesus came from the place of prayer, all men were seeking for him. Let me tell you, child of God, there's a place when you get to, employers will seek for you. There's a place where when you get to, in the place of prayer, you will no longer pray for a husband. But the question will be, who is the right one? Prayer enhances your value. Let me give you the example. Prayer is like makeup. Prayer is like makeup. Ladies, please forgive me. Let me use this example, Munisame. It's not personal, it's just, it's just an example. By nature, by who God created you, you are already valuable because you are a child of, of God, right? You are a child of God, you are already valuable. Now, that is a direct reflection to those ladies who don't do makeup. They're just there. They don't do makeup. Number two, there are two, there, there's these other ladies who they just do slight makeup, just subtle to just, you know, lift their elegance. And, there, and then there is this, Category of people who, when you meet them without makeup, my goodness, my father and my lord, it is a difference of day and. Karibu na msalivia yaje brother. Ah, unyo, I'm so sorry. Guy, it is you. There are people who, if they don't do makeup, my father and my God. You see, they say a friend of mine says God says that we are fearfully and wonderfully, but he didn't say the ratio is the same. Therefore, there are. That's not that that's a joke. That's a joke. Don't don't go quoting me. Kuna watu wenye ratio ni 10 is to 1 and vice versa. Now there are people who without makeup. It is a difference of 
day and night. Let me tell you, when you look at the lives of our fathers, by the grace of God, having interacted with them, let me tell you, these were men who financially, they scored zero. Most of them, eloquence, they scored zero. Most of them, when you come to education, they scored zero. Blessed be for, uh, for our father in the Lord. He's so eloquent and learned. But most of them, most of our fathers of faith in the nation and worldwide, those attributes, even good looking, they scored zero. But those men, they... But let me tell you, those men labored at the place of prayer. And nations could no longer ignore them. The world could not ignore them. Kenya could not ignore them. And they rose. I came to tell somebody in the name of Jesus. If we rise to the place of prayer, nations will look for us. If we rise to the place of prayer, employers will look for us. If we rise to the place of prayer, opportunities will look for us. We'll be no longer running after them. But they'll be looking for us. Because all men will be looking for us. I pray in the name of Jesus for somebody under the sound of my voice. May you rise to the place of prayer and you rise as you rise to the place of prayer. Your value is getting enhanced. Your value is getting enhanced in the name of Jesus Christ. I prophesy to somebody nations are coming after you. I prophesy to somebody nations are coming after you. International opportunities are coming after you. In the name of Jesus Christ, uh, because the Lord uh, is just about to do exceedingly, abundantly, above uh, our imagination. Uh, I decree in the name of Jesus uh, what the Lord has in store for you as we rise to the place of prayer. No eye has seen, uh, no ear has heard, uh, no mind has comprehended uh, what the Lord uh, is about to do. Somebody say amen. amen. May we rise to the place of prayer. Prayer enhances our value. All men, the old will look for us. The young will look for us. Because we've risen to the place of prayer. Number two. Prayer affords us an opportunity to make prophetic decrees. Prayer affords us an opportunity to make prophetic decrees. In other words, prayer affords us an opportunity to create our own reality. Many are the times that we have misunderstood or looked at the prophetic in one way of revealing things. But let me tell you, child of God, the prophetic also creates. The prophetic creates. In you, there is power to create your reality, to create the environment around you. And you see this in scripture, um, in 2 Kings, when Elisha moves to this Shunammite, Shunammite woman, and she was a woman who used to serve him, but he had no, she had no child. Her and her husband, they had, they had no children. And therefore one day, Elisha asked the woman, what do you want? And therefore the woman tells, her, tells him that I have no child. And Elisha proclaims that next year, a time like this, you shall have your own baby. The prophetic declarations. Prayer affords us an opportunity to make prophetic decrees to create our own reality. In the book of Job, chapter number 22 and verse number 28, scripture says, if you could give it unto us, Job chapter number 22, verse number 28. Let us read it together. And you will also declare a... Come on, let us read it together. Two, three. You will also declare a thing and it will be established so light will shine on your ways. Come on, let us read it with understanding. You, it is not me who is standing here. It is you who is listening to me. It is your assignment to declare over your life. It is your assignment to declare, to declare those things that you want to see. It is you who will declare. It is not the pastor. It is not the bishop. It is not uh, the president. It is not the opposition to declare. It is for me to declare a thing and it shall be established. Prayer affords us an opportunity to make prophetic 
decrees. And these decrees can be made in the place of prayer. In the name of the Lord, I decree in the name of Jesus. Uh, I pray for our nation uh, that this nation uh, shall be a peaceful nation. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, today we are here and gather this morning uh, to make decrees, uh, to make decrees uh, of our finances, uh, to make decrees uh, of our lives, uh, to make decrees uh, of our nation. Uh, we are gathered here this morning uh, to make a decree. Would you lift up your mouth, uh, open up your mouth uh, and make a decree. I do not know what is that you have been expecting God for, but this is an atmosphere of making a decree that next year a time like this, uh, that prayer will be answered. Uh, next year a time as this, uh, shaka raba sakata, rako shaka skatalinama. And as I stand on this altar with the partnership of the grace of God upon our Father, I decree in the name of Jesus uh, that Kenya shall hear the word of the Lord. Uh, there shall be no bloodshed uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, there shall be no bloodshed uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, I decree in the name of the Lord uh, that any spirit uh, asking for the blood of people, we silence them this morning uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, and as I stand on this altar, I decree in the name of the Lord uh, that Jesus is lifted in Kenya. The Lord who is the Prince of Peace uh, is lifted in Kenya. Is lifted in Kenya. Is lifted in Kenya. I speak to the north. Uh, I speak to the south. Uh, I speak to the east. Uh, I speak to the west. Uh, shaka Rakoskata. Kenya, Kenya, Kenya. Hear the word of the Lord. Uh, you are not a nation of anarchy. You are not a nation of mayhem. Uh, you are a nation uh, that carries uh, and shall birth revival. Shaka Raka Sokata. Rokoskateke Bashanda. Rika Soka Bashanda. Rakoskateka Bosata. Shaka Rabo Soko Tekepa. Rakoskatakata. Shaka Sketeke Bosata. Can you hear the word of the Lord? Can you hear the word of the Lord? The season of anarchy is over. The season of tribalism is over. The season of war is over. In the name of Jesus. Shaka Raba Seketa. The name that is above every other name. Sheko Seketa. We lift the altar of Jesus in Kenya. We lift the altar of Jesus in Kenya. Shaka Raba Seketa. Rokaskata. Shana Mayanda. Rokaskata. And as the Lord is doing it for Kenya. I make a decree in the name of the Lord uh, for everyone under the sound of my voice. Uh, I make a prophetic decree that the Lord shall lift you. Those who walked in this place expecting promotion, uh, I make a decree uh, in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remaining six months. Uh, they shall be months of miracle, signs and wonders. Uh, those who have walked in this place uh, asking God for job opportunities uh, as I stand on this altar of fire, I lift my hands and stretch them to you. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, may you receive those jobs uh, in the name of the Lord. Uh, those who walk in this place uh, trusting God for healing uh, as I stand on this altar. I make a prophetic decree. Uh, there is a turnaround of your health. Uh, there is a turnaround of your health. Uh, there is a turnaround of your health. Uh, Shaka rako sopra. Shika skota kodagata. Roka skata. Young men are rising back uh, to the place of prayer. Shiko skata Tokata, Rako Sepa Skoterenama Andarabash Yanama Shanda Yandaraba Seketa. I hear the Lord say, there's someone who walked in this place uh, with a back pain. I do not know you, but wherever you are, I make a declaration uh, that by the stripes of Jesus, uh, we were healed. Uh, as I stretch my hands, uh, I decree the healing of God. 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 Uh, Rabba Shanda Sokataraba, Rekoska Teko Rasata, Shana Mayanda, Rabosketa. Shana Mayanda, I hear the Lord say, there are people who walked in this place feeling depressed, 
you're just about to give up on life because of one issue or another. I do not know who you are, but in that mo in this atmosphere of making prophetic decrees, as I stand on this altar, the partnership of the grace of God upon our Father, and stretch my hands to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel our I rebuke the spirit of depression. I rebuke the spirit of repression. I rebuke the spirit of repression. Gates of repression be lifted. Gates of depression be lifted. Gates of depression be lifted. Gates of depression be lifted. Gates of depression. Yeshekaroskate mashata. Mashaskata ranama. Rako zeprashanda. Ranama sokata. Yanama shanda. Rakabo seketa. Shana mayanda. It is done in the name of Jesus. Every decree that you've made over your life, every decree that you've made over your family, every decree that you've made over your finances, I decree in the name of Jesus that it is done in the name of the Lord. I stand here by the authority of Jesus. I stretch my hands and decree and declare, it is done. It is done. It is done. It is done. Oh, Shanama, the Egyptians that have been following you, you shall see them no more. Frustrations that have been following you, you shall see them no more. It is done. Mashaka Zokaba Rakos Katalina Mayanda. Let me finish up. Shaska Tokaba in the name of Jesus. Number three, prayer affords us an opportunity to wage war. Prayer affords us an opportunity to wage war. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 3, this is what scripture says. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 and verse number 3. For those, sorry, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Let me tell you, child of God, it would be so stupid of you if you just sat down and thought that life is all about waking up early in the morning looking for money. Life is all about drip. Life is all about looking good. Let me tell you, there is war in the spirit. We are living in a life that is a battle. And we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with powers and principalities. Scripture says, John 10, 10, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that we may have life and have it abundantly. There is the enemy who comes to steal destinies. There is an enemy that who comes to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus, we have his name that we've talked about. He has come that we may have life and have it abundantly. In 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 8, scripture says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking him who he may devour. Let me tell you, child of God, you can write this down. When you see people succeed, they have mastered the art of warfare. When you see people making it, they have mastered the art of warfare. I will give you these two testimonies and then I'll be out of your way. My parents happen to be pastors. Therefore, one time there's this lady who came to my mother and... Things were not going well for her. <coughs> she's working, but she's not getting results. Applying for opportunities, but not getting results. And it felt frustrating and praying, but not getting results. Therefore, think something must be amiss. Then uh, my mother just told her now, what we are going to do, you shall be fasting and praying for, for 21 days. And you shall, you shall be meeting in prayer um, for Kesha. You shall be going for the Kesha. And then in the last two days, I will join you. So the lady decided that, okay, it's fine. I will pray. She went to, pray, to, to prayer. And then in the last day, it happened that I was home. So my mother just requested me, okay, take me to church. I have a Kesha that I'll, it's not full. We are praying with some certain lady. And you know, Sasa, uh, daddy, mommy's boy, unapeleka mama Kesha, ama namnagani. But I was just seated there at the altar, and they were praying there. Suddenly, I just hear 
the lady screaming, and she starts manifesting in the, in the course of prayer. And then as she was being done, deliverance, I was the usher, as the deliverance was being done on her, she was screaming, and it was the grandmother who was speaking, the, the step-grandmother who was speaking, and saying that she will not make it, she will not succeed. And this is it. She, when she woke up, she was telling us she was, she was seeing herself locked in her heart, in a desert. And this grandmother happened to have died. Let me tell you, immediately she received her deliverance. The following week, opportunities looked for her. She rose in a record time of six months and financial doors opened for her. Marito doors opened for her. But you see, there was a record, there was a track record of ancestral spirits that had said that this one is not rising. This one is not, will not become anything. Buana's first sana. My life story, one, one of my friends, um, Sometimes last year, lost the husband. So um, those who have been to Isiolo, a trailer came and just rolled over them, over the, over the husband, and she lost her husband. Therefore, during Christmas, we just told her, because she had children, let, let her come over and we spend Christmas. And after we are eating and making merry, no one even was in that mode. We just decided after everything is done, let us pray and release her. As, as, as we were praying, um, the Spirit of God hearkened whoever was praying to pray against the spirit of death. And this is it. She started also manifesting. And these, the, the demons that were imprisoning her, this is what they were saying, that it was said that in their family that no one will have a husband over 45 years. And truly, when you look, her mother lost her husband at 43. The firstborn lost, lost her husband at 30. When you look at the secondborn, she had lost her husband when, when uh, she was around 37. And now her, at 31, she is widowed with two, two children. Let me tell you, children of God, this is not to put fear into you because we have the name of Jesus. But this is just to put you in, in realization that there are battles that we are fighting. There are ancestral battles. Not many of us have been privileged to come from families where people are born again, where people have the revelation of spiritual warfare. But there are some of us here who are, who are struggling, maybe barren with barrenness. Maybe you, you are working so hard, but you are not getting results because let me tell you, <coughs> there are powers that at times hold our blessing. And this is where scripture comes and tells us, when Daniel prayed for, 40, for 21 days, the angel of the Lord went, brought the message, told him, on the third day as you are praying, your answers were released. But who? The prince of Persia held them. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul, the, the, the apostle, and I think verse number 18, comes and tells the church of Thessalonians that I wanted to come to you, but Satan hindered me. Satan hindered me. Let me ask you, child of God, we all know who Paul was. He was a man of fire. He was a man who walked in the authority, but Satan hindered him. It would be so stupid of us to just sit down here and imagine that all is okay. Mimi ata sinanga shida na mtu, sinanga shida na shetani. Blessed be the name of Jesus. We need to rise up. There are some of you, if you rise up to the place of warfare, opportunities will open like you've never seen before. There are some of us, if we rise to the place of prayer, that spouse that you're praying for will come. There are some of us that we need to cancel every ancestral decrees that were made against our lives. Abuana's first sana. Therefore, child of God, this is my encouragement to us even as young people. May we rise back and wage war. Let us rise and wage war against satanic decrees, against ancestral powers. Let this not make you uh, be afraid. This is not to put fear in you, but this is to make you, may your eyes be open. For those of us who are trusting God for spouses, it is a prudent thing to look at the lines. What, what has been happening in your life? What happens? Who is who in your life? What is the, the generation all patterns so that you can know what war we are fighting. Scripture comes and tells us in Hosea chapter 4 and verse number 8 or verse number 6 that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Let me tell you it is not every marriage that you see around that is broken. It is not all of them that is because of negligence. Let me take it back again. It is not all families that you see, see Zotes and Yononas in Mekatak work, it is not all of them that it is because of negligence or lack of knowledge or disrespect or those kind of things that we think. There are some people who their lives, their ancestral lines have programmed them that marriage for you will not work. Let me tell you, not every mad person you see around, not all of them, it's a medical issues. There are some of them that destinies have been stolen and exchanged. These things, child of God, in as much as we may not talk about them as regular, they are real. 
Not every successful person you see around, they have made money through the right way. Some of them have taken stars and exchanged destinies. For their, for, for their benefit, blessed be the name of Jesus. Not every child who you see, they are struggling in school. Not all of them, they are dumb. There are some of them that things have been said, their, their, their ancestral lines and their ancestral generational patterns. It has been said that this one, he has a bright star, but you will not see it. You will not get anywhere. And I know in this congregation seated here, there are people here that we are coming from generational, we are coming from generations where curses have been spoken. We are coming from a lineage where failure has been programmed. We are coming for, from a lineage where it has been said that none of you, none of your marriage shall work. None of your relationships can work. And that's why you find yourself, you have devoted yourself, you have given yourself out, but it still doesn't work. It is not all of them that it is not all of them that don't work because you don't know the five qualities of love. Some of them, when you trace back, there is a generational line. Therefore, child of God, this is to enlighten us, even as young people, serving in different capacities. May we rise up to the place and wage, wage war in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, where you shall pray for your children, you shall pray for yourself, and decree in the name of Jesus Christ, every evil word spoken against my future, spoken against my destiny, I cancel it in the name of Jesus. Any evil programming, programmed in my family, I disconnect myself in the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, uh, any evil altar, reason uh, in our family, uh, it is you who knows where you are coming from. Uh, it is for you to rise uh, at the place of prayer and decree in the name of Jesus. Uh, this struggle shall end with me. Uh, this pain shall end with me. Uh, this frustration uh, shall end with me. And speaking to our young people who will rise in the spirit and wage war and decree in the name of Jesus, the destiny of my marriage shall not be stolen. My marriage shall work, my children shall be great in the land. In one minute or so, I want to give you an opportunity to wage war in the spirit. Every evil programming uh, programmed against my finances. Uh, I rise in the name of Jesus, uh, the name that is above every other name. Uh, I rise in the authority of Christ uh, and decree in the name of Jesus. Uh, those powers are broken. Uh, those altars are defeated. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I wage war in the spirit. I wage war in the spirit. Financial struggle that is in our family shall end with me. Shall end with me. I release myself to freedom. For where the spirit of God is, there is liberty. I speak the liberty of God. I speak the liberty of God. Somebody wage war in the spirit. Somebody wage war in the spirit. Sheka rakaskata rokoska poragate rukaseta koshakata rakoska topa shaketa rukara kosata shekosa tokata rokoba shanda any blood shed a spirit in our family I disconnect my in the name of Jesus, uh, and I speak the I sprinkle uh, the blood of Jesus uh, that speaks the better thing uh, than the blood of Abel. Shaka Rabba, the blood of Jesus, uh, 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 the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, Shaka Rabba Soko Tekepa, Sheko Sako Raka, Ropa Sakata, Shaka Rakoskata, Rokoska Tekepa, Shakoskatakata, in the name of Jesus, Shana Mayanda. Somebody wait for the spirit. In one more minute, one more minute, one more minute, one more minute to wage war, wage war, wage war. 
altars uh, that have been risen uh, that are speaking against your destiny in the name of Jesus uh, and the blood of Jesus uh, we bring them down now in the name of Jesus uh, altars uh, that have been risen uh, speaking against your health uh, in the name of Jesus uh, I bring them down uh, in the name of Jesus uh, altars uh, that have been risen uh, to speak against your finances uh, we bring them down uh, we bring them down uh, we bring them down uh, by the anointing uh, that is able uh, to break every yoke uh, and fuck the power of God uh, Fuck the power of God uh, and fuck the power of God. Eshoka sota, eko shata sota, oka rako now in the name of Jesus. Shaka rasko te kapa sota, karos kata, ashanda. Shana mayanda, rako zipra shata, yakaraba shanda. Yanama Shasko take a palinama. Oh, she sata. I hear the Lord say, Shana Masata Kapa Shanda. There are people in this room who walked here and they have dead appointments that it had been programmed that you shall die prematurely. But in the name of the Lord, I lift up my hands uh, as Aaron lifted his hand uh, and decree in the name of Jesus uh, that none of us uh, shall die prematurely. None of us uh, shall die prematurely. I cancel every appointment with death. Uh, I cancel every appointment with death. Uh, Death, oh death, uh, hear the word of the Lord. Uh, Shake us, uh, These ones are uh, they touch, they, are, they are remain untouched. Uh, you shall not touch these ones. Uh, you shall not touch these ones. Uh, I cover the, every one of you uh, with the blood of Jesus. Uh, oh, shake us, I cancel every death appointment uh, in the name of Jesus. Shaka uh, Rosakata Yanama Shanda. Shaskota. There are around four people in this place. There are around four people in this place that in a record time from January to July, you have lost almost five family members. You have lost almost five family members. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare an end, an end, an end, an end. I disconnect you. You shall not die. You shall not die. But you shall live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Rokos kate kapa shata, koseko raka, shakos keto paseta, sheka.